Well, hello everyone. So this video is going to be a little bit different. Uh, no horn honking or recordings in this one. Uh, but if uh, horn repair and technical things are uh, to your enjoyment, well, stay tuned. So what you have disassembled here is a Scallop Base M5. Um, no date stamp, no uh, history or anything about it. Um, picked it up off of eBay. Uh, funny thing was it was being listed as a K5 LA, but we know better than that, don't we? Um, really good price, too. Now, when I got it, it didn't sound all that great, and pulling it apart, I quickly discovered why. So, this is the diaphragm assembly for the number 2 bell, and let's see if the camera can focus on that barely, but you'll see there is more than one disc for these large discs. There is, in fact, in every bell, except for the number 5, there is three of those large diaphragm discs. The number 5 only has two, that's how it was designed. The number 1 diaphragm, though, only has one. So that's a bit of a problem. And that is where this thing comes in. This is a sheet of spring temper 510 bronze. There we go. 6 inches by 18 inches, um, 0 0.020 thick, um, 510 spring temper bronze. This is the material needed to make a diaphragm. Now, this little piece here, this one single piece, to buy it and have it shipped to me cost me almost $50. So this is not, uh, this is not cheap material. Um, and one thing that is going to be difficult here is like I said it's six inches tall well the the one diaphragm happens to be six inches in diameter so there is no room for error at all on that um, the sheet of bronze came from McMaster Carr if you're interested I'll leave a part number in the video description for you um, but anyways this video is going to be all about making more of these uh, number one diaphragms um, and the challenges and fun faced in doing that so stick around all right so I have one disc so I only need two and I thought this was listed as 18 inches long but maybe it's 24 because there's enough space in here probably to make four if you really wanted to um, in any case um, so what I did is I used the original diaphragm as a template and traced around it with a sharpie just to get the rough outline marked. This is not going to intended or going to be the final um, template, the final size. This is basically just so I know um, how to roughly cut it out. Now I don't have a whole bunch of fancy metalworking tools and so I will warn folks right now this is probably going to make a few of you cringe. I'm just going to use a Dremel with a cutting wheel on it, and we'll see how that goes. Um, safety first. Safety goggles are a must when doing this type of work. All right, let's see how this goes. Oh, yeah, and just one more thing before I cut it. That's always fun. All right, enough screwing around. All right, well, seven cutting wheels later and uh, lots of sparkly bronze dust, I, uh, yeah, there's a sparkle, figured out how to make my own glitter. Um, <laughs> anyways, um, after quite a bit of effort just with the cutting wheels, I have the rough shape, and except for the very edges of the sheet, um, I've left quite a bit on the outside of these discs, so I have a lot to work with here. Um, and here's all the scraps. Now these are actually going to be pretty important uh, for trying out different um, grinding, filing, and drilling techniques so that I know what to use for these ones. So I'm going to save these pieces. Um, I, I ground the edges off so they're not razor sharp because yeah, when they first came off they were nasty. So anyways, I'm going to experiment on these pieces and then I'll figure out the best way to deal with that. All right, so here's where experimenting with the scraps really, really comes in handy before actually moving on to the real deal. So I got my grandfather's old bench vise and old drill. 
old enough that it still uses the uh, the bevel gear key instead of the hand tight chuck. Now initially what I did, um, I drilled a 332nd pilot hole, uh, opened it up with a 1 8 and then for the first experiment I used a step drill and took that up to a quarter inch. Step drills being what you're supposed to use for thin sheet metal. And here is that result there. Now that results in a hole that is a little bit oversized and has quite a bit of slop on the bolt, enough that I felt it might be a problem. So for the second piece, what I did, pilot hole with a 332nd, and then I just kept stepping up all the way to a quarter inch with the standard drill bits. Took a lot longer. The result there is a piece that is much more firm and has almost no play in it, about the same as the original diaphragm. And so I'm really glad that I decided to do experimenting on the scraps for that reason alone. Um, well, as you can see, it's pretty tight in here, but that's because the edges aren't smooth. Let me get that out of there without stabbing myself. There we go. But yeah, it, it makes a decent hole. Um, and I think if I just sand the edges, it'll take care of the sticky problem. Now, as for shaping, um, on the Dremel, what I found is to do most of the uh, rough shaping with this grinder, finish off with this one. It's impregnated with aluminum because I tried to grind aluminum with this once. Um, but this does a really good job of doing the fine shaping. And then when that's all said and done, smooth the edges out and get the burrs off with the file. So, that's what I'm going to do here. Okay, so several hours of cutting, grinding, and generally pissing off my neighbors. Um, this is what I have. Still not perfect. They're a little bit wide. Um, they won't quite fit inside the head. Um, so what I did is I uh, put the bolt through, put the original diaphragm on top, and then trace around the edge. And you can see this one especially, there's just a hair left that needs to come off, so. A little bit more, but overall, the general shape is there. Alrighty, so after an entire afternoon of cutting, grinding, sanding, filing, um, and just a whole bunch of fun, um, here is the end result. Uh, not the most perfect things, but also definitely not the worst I've seen as far as homemade sheet metal products go. Um, so, a couple of notes here. Let's see, this one is a little bit discolored at the top. That's because um, it overheated a little bit when I was grinding it. Um, hopefully, that is not going to cause any long-term issues, though it remains to be seen if it will, or even if these homemade diaphragms are even going to work. I don't know. We'll find out. Um, and But other than that, yeah, I'm pretty happy with how things turned out. Um, so this video's already been long enough. Uh, I got uh, it in pieces over there along with a couple other horns. Um, hey, look, an S3J. Haha. <laughs> um, so yeah, anyways, um, so I'll have another video on M-Horn... Um, anatomy and diaphragm assembly and maintenance and all of that stuff and then there will be a third video on the actual test of this thing so stay tuned have a good one